Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents pastor and evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, children, I want to thank God and say greetings again and welcome everybody back to the program today. And we're going to ask the good saints of God to have your Bible ready as we get into our message. And I want to thank God for everyone that writes us and you that need healings and need things to be met. I believe we've got a God that's very faithful and you can send in your prayer requests and, and we have prayer cloths where we send out for people that's needing prayer and we believe in God to really work for his children in these last days and I believe without a shadow of a doubt that we are definitely in the last days as most people recognize by the signs of the times but now what I'm going to be speaking on in these few programs coming up is concerning now the final trumpet that's going to let us realize children with warnings, first of all, that the coming of the Lord is close at hand. And truly, children, you can read in the book of Revelation in different places concerning trumpets sounding. And we need to know the voices today that we're listening to because, children, deception is very great in the earth today. But now, You've got your Bible, you've got the good Holy Ghost if we'll be led by it and it will teach us these things and we just appreciate him for this privilege of being with you and, and like I said now, we have a church service on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, Saturday nights at 7, also Sundays at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and we invite you if you can sometime to come out and be with us and children, we appreciate the Lord for allowing us to be over the air with you. And also we have our website, www.pastorpeterow.com that you can get on it. And we've got a lot of good articles and we try much as we can to get a program on our website. But you can reach us today if you'll write us in any prayer requests. We've got a lot of good little people that believe in, in the power of God, in healing and so forth. But today, now I'm going to go ahead and get into the message and I want you to notice some of the things that the great Paul, the writer of, of a lot of these books here that we're holding called the Bible, he had a, a, a time that he faced tribulations among the Gentiles while he was a preaching and if you remember in the 12th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, when Paul was writing concerning now spiritual gifts, he let us know to be very careful with what we're hearing out of gifts today. But he did say you know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led. So now at the time of the book of Acts and time the apostles begin to go in all the world to preach the gospel. Now us Gentiles had been carried away with dumb idols. And, and, and if you remember now before that God sent the spirit to the Gentiles as well as to the Jews, well, we, we were a people that didn't have hope, didn't have God. And if anybody did come into the ways of the Lord, he'd have to go through the law but thank God when Jesus died, now we have access to the Spirit by the gospel. And children, I thank God that he's got a way prepared that people can be delivered and can be saved today. And I'm going to go ahead today and begin my message out of the 17th chapter of the book of uh, Acts. And I want you to turn with me because what I'm going to be speaking is concerning the appointed day that the Bible declared to be the final day of judgment. And we've got all kinds of events that's happening now to show us the signs of his coming. And as Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and different places, Luke 21, begin to tell us now the signs of that would be happening before the Lord could return. And of course, Jesus himself said immediately after the tribulation of those days that the sun would be darkened, the moon would not give her light. 
stars would fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens would be shaken and then would appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and we're told to look up and lift up our heads for our redemption is nigh. So we need to understand now and God knows I'm telling you the truth that we're facing right now this last trumpet that will sound here shortly in the future and children then only will the dead in Christ be raised and the living be changed as 1 Thessalonians 4 teaches and then we are, we are going to be called up to meet the Lord in the air but in the meanwhile we're going to have to know the truth because the world definitely is being loosed to lying signs and wonders and deceivings of men. And that's where Paul warned us that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith and they would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So children, you better believe them spirits and doctrines is already very much alive in this earth. And Jesus described them as men coming to you in sheep's clothing. See? And I'm talking about men that call themselves prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists in different ways. And the only way you and me is going to have a chance to know who's right and who's wrong is get our Bible and make sure we got the spirit that leads us through these men, the apostles and the prophets of this good Bible that we hold in our hand here and children the coming of the Lord is definitely nigh at hand but I want you to begin with me today as I begin out the book of Acts chapter 17 and I want to show you now Paul he came to a place called Athens and he seen the whole city was given over to idolatry see let me just read you something here and you can mark it down or if you want to go back to it, 12th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians and verse 1, Paul said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Now we've got gifts in the body of Christ that is given by the Holy Ghost. And them's the real working of God. But understand, no matter if it's tongues, prophecies, healings, Whatever gift it is, children, that gift will manifest only by the spirit of truth that leads and guides us. There's no way that we can be living a life in errors and, and in false teachings and then that, that be the real tongues or the real prophecies or, or real gifts working. Honey, as God is my helper, the Holy Ghost is only a spirit of truth and it guides us into that truth which is the word but anyway let me show you this before we get back to the book of Acts so Paul said in verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts brethren I would not have you to be ignorant you know that you were Gentiles see carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now we can call him Lord, Lord and Jesus said many would say to me in that day, Lord, Lord have we not prophesied cast out devils and done many wonderful works. But he, is, he said, I profess unto them, I never knew you. So see, the only way that Jesus can be Lord in our life is by the Holy Ghost. Because the Lord is that spirit and children, it takes the Holy Ghost to make him your Lord. Now I mean, you, we can call him whatever we want to and it's good if you're calling him by the word of God but for him to really be the Lord of my life, I'm going to have to be born to him. And children, that means he has to do the work and, and, and I have to obey him, keep his commandments and please him. But anyway, he said, you know you were Gentiles 
carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led. So see, Paul knew this because God ordained him and chose him to be a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher to the Gentiles as well as the apostle Peter and the rest of them were to the Jews. But now, they're not two different gospels, one for the Gentile, one for the Jews, because Peter, James, John, all of them, including Paul, they had the same Christ, they had the same word and gospel to preach, and it was not different, as a lot of people think. But anyway, I want you to turn with me to this Acts 17, and I want you to notice verse 16. Paul said, now while Paul waited for them, or this is Acts, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred up in him because he saw the city holy given to idolatry. Notice it again. While Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city holy given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. See, Paul had a, a work of ministry that wasn't just in some building somewhere like we do today, but nevertheless he traveled a lot. But listen to verse 18. Then certain philosophers and Epicureans and Sodics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they was accusing him and said, he seems to be set her forth of strange gods. But see, Paul knew who the true God was. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things are or what these things mean. Now listen to verse 21. For all the Athians and the strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul, now notice the scripture, stood up in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens... I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, listen, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Now what is Paul saying here? He noticed their inscription that they had to the unknown God. And he was saying that's ignorance. <laughs> now children, to be honest with you, most people today don't even know who the true God is. But when you study the word of God, it has been revealed. And it's Jesus Christ. If you read 1 John 5, 20, John said, we know the Son of God is come and given us an understanding, the apostles, that we may know him that is true and we're in him that is true, even in his Son, listen, Jesus Christ. This is, this is the true God and eternal life. And, and John said, little children, Keep yourselves from idols. And he said, Amen. So, children, the unknown God that Paul seen them with that inscription, he said, You ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Now, it's not hid. The gospel's not hid to us today if we believe God. But listen what Paul told them. 
God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Now notice that. Neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. Now children, this is the truth. If you study this out, God don't want you to try to worship him through statues, which a lot of people, they'll pray to Murray, they'll pray to this or that. Children, God don't work through statues. God don't work through men's hands as far as making of an idol. Now, they used to worship goddess Diana. Different ways people tried to worship God. But children, even in the Old Testament, there was never but one God. And when he chose Moses and Abraham and all these good prophets, then they had to work through the law. They had to believe in an invisible God and they endured as seeing him who's invisible. But yet there would be times God appeared unto Abraham and said, I'm the almighty God, walk before me and be perfect. God peered unto Moses in the burning bush. Many ways God showed himself as the true God of Israel. And he said, I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, and I'm the God of Jacob. Now, when he was ready to bring you the New Testament, listen, God never changed forms. God never added a couple more gods for you as the world's teaching. But the same God of the Old Testament took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and came here in flesh and blood birthed by a little virgin. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. And he's the one that brought this great revelation. And these apostles had to have their understanding open to who that true God was. See, remember I just read you, or quoted John said, we know the Son of God's come, and he giveth us an understanding that we might know him that is true, and we're in him that's true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Now, any other way of worshiping outside of Jesus Christ is idolatry. Jesus said himself in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. Honey, he told the little woman at the well that God must be worshiped in spirit and in truth. And it took the life of Jesus on that cross for you and me to be able to receive what we call today the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ. And if you remember, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, signifying his death, in John chapter 12, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. So see, he had to come back in the Holy Ghost, and that's why you have the freedom to serve God. Now, Paul didn't know who the true God was and he thought he was doing God right when he was persecuting but he lived the strict life of a Pharisee which wasn't Gentile religion but Jewish religion, see? And Paul lived the life as a Pharisee but he didn't believe in Jesus because no doubt they had talked about him somewhat but did you know it was those Saul or Paul as we call him today held the clothes when they stoned Stephen. But he didn't know he was in ignorance of it. But thank God when that light shined about him, God didn't become unknown. God became known to him. Because the Lord said they're going to know me from the least to the greatest. And old Paul had that experience on the road to Damascus. And thank God when that light shined about him and he asked the Lord, who art thou? Well, the Lord answered, I'm Jesus. So from that time on, Paul learned that great revelation and began to preach to the nations. 
See, Gentiles. And if you'll notice here, he comes to Athens and he told them in verse 22 of Acts 17, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom therefore you ignorantly worship, Paul said him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though we needed anything, seeing he gives to all life, breath, and all things. Now, here's what I'm getting to. And hath made of one blood, that's a human blood, all nations of men, for to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. What does that mean? That means God, the one that is to be worshipped, he made all nations of one blood. And when the Bible said here, he determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Humans are limited. We're appointed to die. We're born into the world, but there's going to be a day unless, of course, now the Lord returns. We're still going to have to put off this old mortal body. But children, what I'm wanting you to understand, there is an appointed time upon this earth for the Lord Jesus Christ to execute judgment upon all. And children, whether you're righteous or you're wicked, you will meet the Lord someday. And this is what we're going to be speaking about because you've been taught all over this earth that you're going to have plenty of time to make things right after Jesus comes this next time. Children, that's man's deceiving. And Satan is backing them up because he wants you to perish. But God is not willing that any perish. And children, as God is my helper, Jesus died in his body to bring life to this world. And when he comes the next time, he's not coming to be a savior. He's coming to judge the world. And we're going to get our reward whether it be good or whether it be bad. Children, you won't have no time to make things right if God called you out right now today. If you're not serving him, you won't get that chance. Now I know they're teaching you these things. And telling you you're going to have a chance in the future when Jesus comes back to take over earth and to set up a political and a kingdom of his own. Honey, it's not going to work that way. That's why you need to understand his second coming. Because they're deceiving you and telling you if you don't get right now, you can later. That we're all going to get a chance again through the millennium. Now, children, I'm going to show you how they're failing God. But nevertheless, I want you to listen to him. Verse 26 said he's made of one blood, that's us humans, all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations that they should seek the Lord if happily they may feel after him and find him. That's in this prison. Though we be not far from every one of us, listen, for in him we live, we move, and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. And that's true. Now, if you remember in the book of Ephesians, and also the book of Colossians chapter 1. When the Bible said here that in him we live, we move, we have our being. 
were the offspring of God. Now, at the time of creation, on the sixth day when it come time for God to make man, He never made him in the image of animals. He made him in his own image, in his own likeness. And the breath of life was given by God himself. He breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and the man become a living soul. Now, Jesus, the one most of the world still don't understand him. Did you know as God is my helper, that he was the image of the invisible God back there that man was created in the likeness of. Honey, Adam was the first man created in God's own image, and that image was Jesus Christ. And if you read Colossians 1, the Bible said he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. By him, Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, see, under the earth, and by him all things consist, whether they're visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, come on children, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And Jesus is the head of the church, children, and without him you have no life. He's not only the future resurrection, but He is the life for us today. And I mean even in our natural life, He gave us the breath of life. And in Him we move, we have our being. And if He calls you out tonight, you'll see Him in the final judgment. So children, be sure to stay with me. I see my time's up. Now, it's important you study this with me because I'm going to be showing you a pointed day That's out here in the future, children, and we need to get prepared. So be sure to stay with me in our next program. Write us, send any prayer requests. And children, if you can help us on the program, we sure need it and appreciate you. But we do thank God that He is your Savior, if you'll accept Him. So till our next program, write us, send any prayer requests. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you. I mean, even in our natural life, he gave us the breath of life. And in him we move, we have our being. And if he calls you out tonight, you'll see him in the final judgment. So- They may
Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, children, I want to thank God and welcome me back today. And We appreciate the Lord for this privilege of getting to be with you today. Especially want to send it out to you that are in prisons and jails and nursing homes and hospitals and just wherever you are today, we thank God that we get report from people that watch a program out of jails and, and even hospitals in different places and we appreciate you and I also send it out to Brother Lee Watkins if he's listening in and I'm going to go ahead and get back into our message and I hope he was with us in our last program because what I'm going to be speaking on in these next few series is concerning children the appointed day that God has already declared and that means that you and me are definitely coming to the end, not of an age, but the end of these heavens and earth when the Christians will eventually inherit eternal glory with their body, not this body, but the body that God has prepared for us in the future, which we can't imagine it, but whatever, it's going to be mightily great and we're going to be like our Lord in that time, but... There is a future resurrection. And what I want to speak on today, continuing for just a moment out of the book of Acts, the 17th chapter. And children, I want you to read this with me. And we don't need to accept imaginations and theories of men. We need to know to be a fact what we're believing, whether we can read it or not. And I want you to go with me now to the Book of Acts, the 17th chapter, because this is when the Apostle Paul was facing a Gentile world that was led away of idolatry, and he found these in Athens and had that inscription to the unknown God, and Paul let them know that's ignorance, because we got somebody revealed today that is the true God and eternal life, and of course that's our Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody can come to the Father but by Him. And the reason is, is because He is the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. Children, the God of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ as well as He is of the New. And I know people kind of get their minds a little discouraged when you tell them that, but it's the truth. And I want you to notice here though, because I want to get into the book of Revelation here in a few minutes concerning the same time frame. But if you'll notice here, in this 17th chapter, verse 29, Paul said, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think, now notice this, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's devices. And the times of this ignorant, the Bible said God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Now, notice verse 31. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he's given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. And when they had heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, others said we will hear of thee again of this matter. And then it goes on, tells that Paul departed, but now children, there is a day appointed that we're going to be judged and I believe the second book of Corinthians chapter 5 said we're all going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ that every man may give an account of the things done in his body, whether it's good or bad. So we're going to be taken into these things, children. And I want you to go back with me to the book of Job, about the 14th chapter and it's plain spoken. Even the Old Testament men of God, they didn't oppose what's in the New Testament. In other words, what 
Paul and these ministers of the New Testament, it wasn't contrary to what the prophets had foretold. You can't do that. And neither would God allow His Word to be moved out of its course and its place, but yet you got a lot of men that's perverting it today and trying to twist the Word of God, but now they're going to have to face God as well as I do and you do and everybody else. But in the meanwhile, I want you to listen to Job for just a minute. In verse 12 of the 14th chapter of the book of Job, verse 12, So man lieth down, and riseth not. Now that's talking about at death. So man lieth down, and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Now how much plainer could you get when this good man of God said, man lies down and rises not till the heavens be no more. That's talking about the final resurrection. And we can't come out of these graves before the tribulation, neither during the tribulation. Why does it have to be after everything is fulfilled? Because we're going to show you the angel declares time no longer. And we're working up to that seventh angel sounding. And children, you better believe that you've got multitudes being taught that there's going to be a rapture before the tribulation. Some of them kind of confused said, well, they believe it'll be during the tribulation, somewhere in the middle of it. But according to Jesus is what you're going to have to hear. He said immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, he's the one that declared in Matthew 24 and I believe verse 35 that heaven and earth would pass away and Job here is telling you plainly, man lieth down and rises not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake or be raised out of their sleep. Now, it don't matter how much they oppose this and say that we're going to be raised in the the, the rapture and use First Thessalonians chapter 4 as to represent the rapture before the tribulation. But see, that's what they're teaching. There's no way the dead in Christ can rise first and we live and be changed until the word of God's fulfilled. Jesus said heaven and earth and pass away. Job said man lies down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. Now, watch Job here in the seventh chapter. Go with me here. And we're just showing you these things because God's appointed time is not going to change for nobody. And no matter how much they try to get your mind believing in a rapture theory before the tribulation. Now, we're not denying the catching away. We're definitely going to leave here someday. But you're not going to go no further than meeting the Lord in the air. And then these heaven and earth passing away and we're coming down on a new heaven and new earth wherein dwells righteousness. There will be no devil in that day. And children, it won't be a temporary thousand years, but it's forever and ever. But in the meanwhile, we're going to have to know the truth. And if you'll notice here, in the seventh chapter of the book of Job, Job even said in verse 8, now you'll have to read it all when you get time, he said, The eye of him that has seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away, listen, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, and neither shall his place know him any more. Now, he's not telling you here that there's not a resurrection. When he's saying he'll return no more to his house. Children, you're appointed to die in this body. And when it comes time for this body to be put in a grave or whatever happens to it, we will never see 
this house again. Why? Because there's a change. We're going from mortal to immortal. Natural body to a glorified body. Children is God is my helper. In that future resurrection which is the second coming of our Lord Jesus. Now I know they've got so many teachings, children, and books out here that they're trying to get you to believe that you're going to be sneaking out of here before the man of sin, before the tribulation, and that's why I have to teach these things over and over because God don't want us to be deceived by any means. No matter who it is, me or anybody, if we can't read the truth, then children, you don't need to accept it. If we can't read our doctrine, there's no such thing with God as a theory or guesswork between the lines. Now, there was times he used types and shadows to represent the law. There were times he used figures and symbolic meanings, but nothing opposed Jesus Christ personally saying, heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. See, they're wanting to do away with his words and keep the heaven and earth. But it's not going to happen because Jesus done declared it. God help us. Why won't you believe something that's already written? If he's done put it in the book, there's nothing you can do about it. It's settled in heaven. You can try to twist it and change it, but at the day of judgment, God will judge us. By this book, See, it's done settled. I mean, don't get hurt at me. You've got multitudes. They'll sit down and try to figure out ways to prove to you that certain parts of this Bible's not right. That it's been misunderstood, misinterpreted, and this and that. But if you'll notice, God help you to open your eyes to this. If you'll notice the parts that they're perverting is the part of the Bible that's against them. See, for example, as I've told you before, when Paul said, let no man deceive you by any means. 2 Thessalonians 2, that day shall not come, talking about the coming of the Lord, except there come a falling away first and the man of sin revealed. Now, you know well as I do, they'll take that scripture, I'm talking about you big scholars, They'll twist at it and tell you, now that's a misinterpretation. There's hundreds of places to prove that Scripture's wrong or been misinterpreted. Honey, your Bible said all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. But when will you realize, if you'll notice, they're only picking the ones that oppose them. Because Paul said they'll come a falling away first and they'll say, now that's a misinterpretation. It should mean they'll come a snatching away or a catching away first. But notice it. You can even go to Matthew 25, 31, I believe it is, or Matthew 24, I'm sorry. Let me find it for you. Matthew 24 and verse 35. If you want to mark that down, listen to Jesus himself speaking this. Heaven and earth shall, shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What I've told you, it won't pass away. It'll happen. Well, what are they saying? Well, honey, that's a misinterpretation. That shouldn't be in there that way. There is no end of the world. There is no end except for the age. Now, isn't that what you're hearing? If ever God help us to open our eyes to what they're doing out here. Honey, God help us. Satan is transformed as an angel of light and he's got his ministers out here transformed, his ministers, but they're transformed as ministers of righteousness and God's going to meet them for it. You understand that? Jude prophesied of them, said the Lord's coming with Ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment and convince the world of what's going on. Now let me tell you something, children. As God is my helper, you can have 20,000, 40,000 preachers backing you up. You could have every preacher in the United States backing you up. But if there's one scripture that you're opposing, 
it'll still be right and 20,000 wrong. You understand that? God's word will never be changed in him. He's the same yesterday, today, forever, and he settled his word in heaven, and it's this word of God that's going to meet us in judgment. Now, I know I have to tell you these things because I know where we're at and what's going on. And what they're doing is perverting the gospel of Christ. And if you notice, they're only changing the scriptures that oppose them. They'll say, well, now, honey, that's an error. They'll read you something and say, now, it don't really mean it that way. See, it's only the ones they want. They don't do nothing against the ones that prosper and ones that teach you of Christ being a son of God. No, they don't say nothing against that. But they want to pervert and twist the ones that goes against their teaching. And they want to go all through the Bible finding men as types of what they want you to hear. Now children, it's up to you. As God is my helper. Job, how plain could you get when Job said there in that 14th chapter that man will not rise till the heavens be no more? How plain can you get than that? And when he said here, the eye of him that has seen me will see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me and I am not. Now all that is meaning is that we're in a body that when it comes time for God to take us out of here or time for us to die, this body will never be remembered no more in God. It won't come up out of the grave. It won't do it. You get a new body, a glorified body. And that's why Job wasn't opposing it here but if you go read the fifth chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul said that we know, we know that if our earthly house, the one you're in, of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, and children, if you're living, you can't get that house until there's a change. And that's when the Lord comes. The dead in Christ rise first. We that are alive are going to be changed in a moment, twinkling of an eye, and we're all going up together to meet the Lord in the air. It's that simple. But they want to twist and pervert it. But now when he's saying here, he shall return no more to his house, and neither his place know him anymore. That's in this former life. All this life's going to pass away. We're coming into a, a glorified state with Jesus. It's going to be greater than you could ever imagine or anything of that sort. But now, I'm giving you that to let us know we better start really giving earnest heed for these last days. Now, if you'll notice here, in the go with me right quick, I'm just going to turn you to it, 